Hi, this is JD. I'm inviting you to join me and Dr. Asante Leblanc right here on I-95.5 FM for our brand new segment, The Live Checkup, every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Together, we will take you on a journey of health and well-being as we explore every level of traditional and alternative medicine. Dr. Leblanc will be ready to answer all your questions on air. So tune in to the most interactive health talk show, The Live Checkup, Tuesdays from 10.30 to 11 a.m. This feature is sponsored by Unicoma Trinidad Limited. See clearly and choose Quartz Optical. We offer you free digital eye examinations by our highly qualified optometrists at our 14 locations nationwide. A wide range of designer eyewear for the entire family. 25% off when you bring us your prescription. Plus, we have affordable payment options for you with Quartz Ready Finance and our Forever 18 plan. We pride ourselves in providing you with the best eye care. Quartz Optical. Value you can see. So it's about that time for us to dive inside of the live checkup right here on I-95.5. Tuesday, May 25th, in studio with me, I've got Dr. Asante LeBlanc. And as always, it's so good to have you in studio with me, Doc, diving into some of the burning questions we have pertaining to our health. And of course, we've got to say thank you to our friends at Unicommerce. So good morning to you both. Morning. Morning, Daddy. Can you hear me well? Because I have on my mask. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're using the is it the N95? The K N95. K N95. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How? So, so say something else. Let me see how you're sounding. Hello, hello. Yeah, you're sounding testing. good, okay, man. Okay, Not okay, too okay, muffled. Okay. Nice. Morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I um, you know what? I want to certainly dive inside of the conversation pertaining to hypertension today. This is part two of it, really. And would you believe? Doc, in in just a few minutes, we're going to dive inside of the questions, which are on my phone right now, which we are certainly (laughs) (laughs) using. So we also have live on Facebook. So good morning to all of those of you. They loved, by the way, the selection from Michelle, Dr. Asante Leblanc. Thank you. They said thank you for requesting that one. You're most welcome. When Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. So, Doc, since then, you know, we've had a lot, since last week, we've had a lot of conversations pertaining to uh, hypertension outside of the world, people asking me questions, wanting to know so much more. So I want to create that opportunity, especially today, for those listeners to call in and present your questions as well to the Doc in studio. This is the live checkup. Don't forget to tell everyone about it on I-95.5. And we're certainly going to dive into your questions again. So if you can just go to one of the things I remember you spoke of last week and I think that is still for some persons who may have missed it define for me hypertension but also those two levels you remember you've got the systolic and the diastolic please if you can yeah okay, okay. no problem <laughs> <laughs> so hypertension is basically when our blood pressure we measure it with something called a sphygmomometer Mm-hmm. or the BP monitors, you know it and that's when we have hypertension is defined as any blood pressure that is tested three times, three different times on three different occasions and it's higher than 140 90 millimeters per mercury or mmHg. So the systolic pressure is the, fir- the, the one at the top and that is the pressure coming out of the heart. So that measures from, that is the pressure we see coming into the aorta and then to the body. Mm-hmm. The diastolic pressure is basically what we call our filling pressure and mm-hmm. that's the pressure going into the heart. And that is, the, during the diastolic phase, that is when the heart itself is nourished with blood, oxygenated blood. So there's a reason that we want both of them to be stable. We don't want them to be e- elevated for long periods of time at all, uh, if at all. And we don't want erratic spikes because then we have major organ damage. And as you speak about major, major organ damage, you said as a result, I remember last week, just one thing you touched on that this can be your hypertension can be as a result of just simply some other sort of misfunction you have in other organs or other parts so it's it's rare so 95 right. percent of hypertension patients or hypertensive patients are what are have what we call being um essential hypertension so that means that it's multifactorial and there's no secondary cause that can actually be treated to bring the pressures down Right. So that means it's due to your genetics it's due to our lifestyle because hypertension is a lifestyle disease. It's one of the NCDs. It's one of the big comorbid conditions that we hear about all the time now in COVID time. Mm -hmm. So that means it's your genetics, your lifestyle, how you eat, how you exercise or don't exercise, your sleep, effective sleep or lack thereof, stress coping, the type of food you put into your body. 
um, you know, and if you look at the um, Trinidad and Tobago NCD Alliance, mm -hmm. um, you'll find that we're putting out a lot of information about package, labeling of the packages now, food packages, because the Healthy Coalition of the Caribbean is trying to force the governments to acknowledge that in the Caribbean, we need to have our packages labeled properly, right. telling you accurately what is in the food. And then 5% of the hypertensive patients have secondary causes. So that means it might be something like a tumor on the adrenal gland. Mm. Um, we have severe renal disease and other illnesses, thyroid, extreme hypothyroidism. So there are other secondary causes which we treat, therefore, to bring down the blood pressure. I heard someone saying some time ago that, you know, someone they know has both of them, the low and the high blood pressure. Can that be possible in a human, having low and no. high? What is happening is that they're probably not being measured correctly. So when I say that, I mean that they may be hypertensive, but the medication that they're receiving, now if they're really paying attention to their lifestyle and, they're paying, and then the lifestyle modification mm -hmm. helps tremendously and it's a cornerstone of hypertension management. So if you're doing an excellent job at how you're eating, but you have medication, it's important for you to always check in with your private physician or your family physician or your doctor. I mean, whichever one in the public or private sector, because and have a blood pressure diary, which we spoke we of. We spoke of last. Yeah. Because if you're on medication, but you have turned your lifestyle around to a healthier lifestyle, then the need for medication may, please note, may decrease. So that is why they may think that they have high and low blood pressure. So you're not saying would, you're saying it may. It may, and I depending hear you on, yes. on that. Um, we want to take a quick pause and say thanks to our friends at Unicom, and then we come back with more questions I've got for you, Doc, you know, in terms of, you know, uh, some what health problems are associated with high blood pressure. <coughs> yes, in, or complications. complications that we can speak of there. Mm -hmm. And we've got some, more, I've just got maybe three more questions, and I'll let the listeners do the rest, all right? Awesome. This is the live checkup right here on I-95.5. We've got to say thank you to our friends at Unicoma. See clearly and choose Quartz Optical. We offer you free digital eye examinations by our highly qualified optometrists at our 14 locations nationwide. A wide range of designer eyewear for the entire family. 25% off when you bring us your prescription. Plus, we have affordable payment options for you with Quartz Ready Finance and our Forever 18 plan. We pride ourselves in providing you with the best eye care. Quartz Optical. Value you can see. All right, so we're back, 10.35. <laughs> the doc and I always have some great off-mic conversation and a bit of laughter. You guys heard the laughter that she offers before, and that's one of the things I love about it. It makes it just so easy for us to learn so much more from her pertaining to our health. The live checkup right here on I-95.5, the number is 622-EYES. Hold on to that number if you've got a question. Even if you're placing it on Facebook page, I'll try my best to look across there as well and on the WhatsApp. So, doc, here's another couple of questions that I've got for you. Does... Uh, in terms of just what are the health problems are associated with high blood pressure, and I think about the kidneys as well in that, so I just wanted to dive inside of that. So as we spoke last week, J.D., the complications or the target organs that are affected by high blood pressure are the brain, the eyes, yes. the heart, peripheral circulation, and the kidneys. So this just means that because of the elevated pressures going to these organs, you will get vascular damage. So we have what we call micro and macro vascular damage. And based on that vascular damage, meaning damage to the actual blood vessels mm -hmm. due to the extensive high pressures going to it, then you will have organ damage. So you can have a stroke. Mm. You can have strokes in many forms. You can have what they call a mild stroke, which is a TIA, which goes away in 24 hours. You recover in 24 hours. You can have a bigger stroke. I mean, with paralysis, yeah. and you can have death. You can have aneurysms bursting if there are aneurysms in the body. You can have hemorrhages, which also, those are that's a type of stroke, but it's a hemorrhagic stroke and not an ischemic oh. stroke. So the different strokes, you have heart attack, angina in the heart. You have retinal hemorrhaging. You can have papilledema, which is swelling at the back of the eye. You can have actual blindness due to sustained and, and um, malignant hypertension or hypertensive urgencies and emergencies, which is when you have a huge spike in the blood pressure, right? And you have to go to the hospital for that to be brought down. You can have kidney damage. So the kidney damage can start very minor. So when we do checks on hypertensive patients mm -hmm. as routine medicals, we have to look at the proteinuria, meaning the level of protein in their urine. So we look for microscopic and macroscopic amounts because we want to know 
if the kidneys are being affected by the blood pressure because at some point we can reverse that damage but at some point we cannot, cannot. reverse that damage so it's always easy to get so things it's sorted important out important because then we know when to use medication mm-hmm. and that's what i want people to understand that you know we have a great suspicion and conspiracy theories about big pharma and while i understand the lack of trust in medicine and big pharma and even with covid we're seeing a lot of lack of trust mm-hmm. we have to also give science some kind of credit because we have very diligent scientists who are working hard and assiduously to make us better you know but it's not medicine alone it can't be about pharma alone i agree it has to be integrative it has to be holistic yes you have to do lifestyle changes you have to take control of your life right but that being said you can't be afraid to take medication I'm watching you with your mask and I'm saying, you know what? I can do my show with the N95, KN95. You sound not, you sound really good. So <laughs> I sound like I'm not dying, right? My, yeah, because sometimes I have trouble using the mask But it takes, here, it but takes it, time. It takes time to, to tell to yourself you. mentally that you're not dying. Yeah. You know. So connect <laughs> connect hypertension to COVID because we are inside of a COVID uh, pandemic yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Can you connect the two? Because persons, especially right now where there's the onset of vaccinations, persons mm-hmm. are asking so much questions about, okay, my, my mother or father has hypertension. Should they get the vaccines? Can you connect that too? We have not seen any major um, contraindication at this time to the use of vaccines with hypertension in patients with hypertension. Now, I want you to understand why I keep saying that at this time. COVID is a very dynamic and novel virus. As you know, it was called a novel coronavirus last year. There's a reason for that. It's new to us. So I understand. We're all learning. The scientists are working Mm -hmm. 24-7, I dare I say 28-7, 367 days a year because we have to try and make it better for our populations. There will be missteps. There is no doubt about that, J.D. But I think we have to also understand that while this is, it may look like a big experiment, we have to learn based on clinical evidence. We have to learn based on what we're seeing in the population because there is no history of this. You understand? The influenza pandemic is one pandemic, but it's not the coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. And this is where... I'm seeing more and more as a physician, I personally am seeing more and more where I'm seeing politicians around the world, around the world are not listening and are not taking stock. And this is around the world. This is not about Trinidad and Tobago. And why do I say this? I say this because maybe I'm a fairy tale and I'm living in a fairy tale and I'm a dreamer, but I thought that somehow the world leaders would listen to, to Dr. Tedros. I thought that it would trip. happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that we would all come together. But I find that each country is trying to move on. And as they try to move on, they have an impact on our countries, the, the developing countries. And that is a problem. And, and at some point, the world has to come together if they really and truly want to make it a better place for mankind on the whole. And that's, and that's a good point because we all occupy this space we called the world. We all occupy this space, but so some people are forgetting to- that. So COVID with hypertension, I'm sorry, I went off on this rant. No problem, this that's This self-righteous okay. rant here. <laughs> but COVID and hypertension. So hypertension has been seen to be one of the complications or comorbid conditions that are greatly affected with COVID patients in that we tend to see that the, the, um, the, the, the system, the running angiotensin system that regulates blood pressure in the kidney may be affected by an infection by COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Mm-hmm. And therefore, we may have more complications. You may have more elevated blood pressures. You may have lower blood pressures. I mean, they're varying things. So the reality is, JD, when you have hypertension, you're more at risk than a person who does not have a comorbid condition. Mm -hmm. And that is why we're trying to get people vaccinated with the complications and the comorbid conditions. Because with the vaccination, we will at least try, we will at least be able to decrease hospitalization. Because with hospitalization comes more complications and possibly death. And that is what we're aiming to to de- to stop right now in Trinidad and Tobago. Is it true? And I'm not meaning to put you in a spot here, but what are some of the first things we need to do? Like, let's say, person so taking the the vaccine, you're hearing some person saying that they have the the nurses will check their pressure as well as sugar first. Is that something that you're seeing happening? Yes, right it's now? supposed to happen because we have to be very conscious. Because if you do have too too much of an elevated pressure or sugar, we may have to delay your vaccination by a day or two. But it may just be that you're nervous. I was about, because, yeah, because remember, I have yeah, the coat. What yeah, is it, the white, white coat? White coat, hypertension. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really up to the clinician at the time, depending on how you're feeling. 
because we don't want to cause more problems. Yeah, this is the live checkup on I-95.5 with Dr. Asante LeBlanc. Yo, I'm yo, JD. Yo. <laughs> I like how you said that. Yo, yo, yo. And she's answering your questions. You know, people are asking why hypertension. It is one of the comorbidities that's been in the and news a lot. And not only that, it's, it's that we there is COVID and there is life. Life. Thank you. And the Thank NCDs you. are very important. And while we are very, very, very concerned where COVID is concerned and we want the public to understand COVID, I think we also have to remind people about their other diseases and how to protect themselves and stay balanced and stay healthy. And mental health is important as well. And that impact, that is impacting on your blood pressures as well. And I think we need to have everybody understand the need to be balanced and healthy now in order to survive COVID. God forbid you get an infection. That's what that, that word balance, you know, you balance always like to put that. Yeah, balance is very important. And then it, very, it just speaks loudly to your own personal responsibility about self. You know, like you and I have been talking about, okay, every morning we're trying to put in a little, t- well, <clears throat> I'm 30, doc is 40 minutes per Yes, well, yeah. I'm proud to announce that my daughter is my trainer now. Excuse me. Yes, very yes, nice. Good yes. morning. Yes. Is it Lola? It's Zola. Zola, yes. yes, yes. yes. Good morning. So, so that's another part of the responsibility, putting Jenny, in the exercise, important lifestyle because, changes. You know, I've been working excessively hard, as you know. Yes. And um, I lost track of my exercise regime and recognized that I had to get back to it in order for sanity, not to mention the fact that I needed to be healthier. So it's important to, to, to put aside that time. And 20, 30 minutes is still enough. Thank you. You know, I would not challenge anybody who is very, you know, we have to take time because if we don't get that moment where you you are practicing actively aerobic exercise practicing getting that heart muscle pumping and and allowing for that antioxidant to be moved away effectively and not only popping pills if you don't do that then we're in trouble can i just say something what happens and then we go to the questions i promise guys Mm -hmm. you say you say pumping your heart pumping right but what is happening that's I get more nervous when I feel my chest. Let's say I'm doing a 30-minute workout and I feel my yeah. chest just pumping. But I don't know. Like, you'll never feel your chest. You know, it's radio, so I'm going to behave myself. <laughs> so what? what <laughs> is the plus with that? What is happening to the heart but at that point? But your heart rate is increasing. I mean, you're exercising. You're giving more work to your heart. But and how does heart it help the hypertension that connected because, to that? Because when you're doing the exercise, w- with aerobic exercise, you're allowing for effective flow and blood flow and circulation and therefore repair at the same time right you understand and you're allowing the heart you the heart is being trained let's just say to deal with stress then and so with hypertension with the exercise we actually see a relaxing of the yeah, vessels yeah. so the vessels will eventually over time not be as constricted and therefore the pressures will drop all right guys taking a quick pause to say thanks to these folks and right after that i promise you we take your call 622 eyes this is the live checkup on i95.5 see clearly and choose quartz optical We offer you free digital eye examinations by our highly qualified optometrists at our 14 locations nationwide. A wide range of designer eyewear for the entire family. 25% off when you bring us your prescription. Plus, we have affordable payment options for you with Quartz Ready Finance and our Forever 18 plan. We pride ourselves in providing you with the best eye care. Quartz Optical. Value you can see. All right. (laughs) We're back. (laughs) It's just about 14 minutes before the top of the hour. You've got your questions. As always, we ask you, once you place your questions inside of the live checkup, can you make them as quickly as possible for us so we can certainly answer as many questions from Dr. LeBlanc. We're going straight into the first one. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hi, morning. Good morning. What's your question? I have both uh, high blood pressure and high blood sugar. Should I take that vaccine? I want you to say that question again, please. I have both high blood pressure and high blood sugar. Should I take the vaccine? Yes, you should. You're someone with a with two comorbid conditions, therefore you should take the vaccine. But please speak to your doctor before you do, so your doctor who knows you can can advise you properly on 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 taking the vaccine and the timing of that. Thank okay. you. Thank you for your question. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's rather strange to just stop it this morning because yesterday I seriously panicked when I checked my pressure. It was like 138 over 77 or something. I really, really panicked. Yesterday I was walking around with this thing on my wrist all day checking my pressure. <laughs> what I want to know is if uh, for your age group, is pressure like 110 over 67, 65 too low or something? 
No, definitely. So thank you for the question. It's, it's um, okay. once you're an adult, your we ex- we our normal blood pressure, no matter our age, is considered to be between 110, 120, over seventy, over eight, um to eighty. Now that is the majority of people. Now there are people like me, as I told you all last week, who have pressures ninety over sixty, yeah. and that's not that's normal for me. And I don't feel sick at all. So you, what your pressure walking around with that wrist monitor, first of all, will send you into a tizic. And the wrist monitor has to be monitored. When you use a wrist monitor, Resting. you have to be rested. Your, your wrist has to be at the level of your heart and you have to stay steady. It's very sensitive. So that pressure that she referred to, 138 over 77, it's fine. It's not considered high blood pressure. But if you were worried because you saw an elevated pressure, the worry will make it elevate further. So if you you should just sit down, relax, and then do it later. So it's important, before I take the next call, just touch on that then. It's important to take the testing accurately, which is? Accurately. So when you wake up in the morning, you rest for five minutes, take your blood pressure, or when you go to bed, you rest for five minutes and take your blood pressure, right? If you're feeling like how she was nervous and she took her pressure, she saw it high, so she had the pressure monitor on her hand all day, then I wouldn't recommend that. I would say just relax for another half an hour and then take the blood pressure again. All right, so we're going to take another caller. Hello, good morning. You're live. Hello, good morning. Good Good morning. morning. Okay, so here's the bombshell. (laughs) (laughs) I just finished chemotherapy. I am diabetic and I am on Eloquest because I have a port in my neck. Um, My veins were collapsing, so... Because of all of that, I'm concerned about taking um, the vaccine because I know there are some people, I've been listening to BBC and they were saying there that if your immune system is compromised, you should be careful in taking the, the vaccine, right? So I would like to take the vaccine, but I have concerns about taking the vaccine because of my immune system have been good though, you know, um, and I do my CBC, it's, it's really good. Um, my blood pressure does be elevated. My diastolic have been elevated up to um, 90 and 99. The systolic is good. The, the pulse is good. But when my diastolic go high, my neck gets very tight. And I'm very concerned about that because I don't know if it's the eloquence doing it because the port eventually gave me a clot in my neck. So you hear how many stories I have. All so right. you're definitely right? a bombshell, yes. All right. Yes. yes. <laughs> so um, please give me, I would listen, please give me some um, advice. Oh, Thank my you. goodness. Yes. Thank you. So, I mean, my best advice to you, I mean, that's very complex. So you're very complex. And I, and I first of all, yay for surviving cancer. Um, now, I would recommend speaking with your oncologist and also your family physician. It should be a multidisciplinary meeting so that they understand your particular um, situation Mm -hmm. and case. Because for me to tell you, go ahead and take it, I don't know all the intricacies of your health profile. So I definitely would recommend that you speak to your oncologist. I can tell you um, that Dr. Capildeo, who is a very um, renowned oncologist in our country today, did speak to me last week, coincidentally, because I'm the chair of the Trinidad and Tobago Cancer Society. And he was saying that he really wanted us to remind the cancer survivors and the cancer patients the importance of being vaccinated because getting COVID is much worse than the vaccine. So, I mean, that would be my general advice Mm -hmm. to, to take the vaccine. But I would really want you to urge you that is to have a discussion with your caregivers. Thank you for that. Hello. Good morning. What's your question? Hi, morning. Good morning. morning. I'm calling concerning the the vaccine. I had surgery in December (laughs) for a hernia in the navel. And I have blood clots also. So I would like your advice if I can take the vaccine because I have an appointment for tomorrow. Please call (laughs) <laughs> all right, listen off, Mike. She'll answer for you. The pressure, the pressure. Yeah. It, it, so, it, so COVID is all around, right? So, we, so really and truly, um, if you have history of blood clots um, and you are on blood thinners, we are not seeing a major contraindication. But again, you need to have a discussion with your physician because for me to tell you, yes, without knowing the details, for example, December yeah. to now, I may be a little more cautious in taking the vaccine. But I don't know your history, and I do want you to call your physician now and tell them. I mean, a lot of my patients are doing that to me. They're calling me and saying, I have to take that vaccine tomorrow. Can I do it with Mm -hmm. X, Y, Z? And I will pull up their file, go through it, and then give an honest advice. Do you pull up my file? Yes, I pull up your file every day. It's this time you call me. (laughs) (laughs) Have a good morning. I hope that answers your question. Good morning. You're live. 
Good morning, you're live. What's your question quickly, please? If you have hypertension and diabetes, then you, yeah, uh, they have, like, considering the, the, you have flashes in your eye, like, it, sometimes you see flashes, should you take the vaccine? Oh, right, okay. So, so first of all, yeah. So uh, first of all, if you have hypertension and diabetes and you're getting flashes in your eye, I would wonder if you've been checking with your doctor regularly to make sure that your high, your blood pressure and your blood sugars are stable with medication and lifestyle because the flashes in the eye is concerning because the eyes are one of the target or end organ damage oh. for both diabetes and hypertension. Therefore, I would be rem- it would be remiss of me to tell you take the vaccine. I must urge you to go to your doctor, get a checkup, speak to them. And I know we're in an SOE, so most doctors are only seeing emergency cases yeah. and yeah. as a needs base because it's not good for us to do checkups at this time during the SOE for many reasons. So Call your physician's office. They tend to do teleconsults as well. Um, and they will speak to you. They should speak to you. They should go over your file and discuss it with you. But I would be more concerned about the flashes in the eye, to be honest. Thank you for that, Doc. Hello, good morning. You're inside the live checkup. Hello, good morning. You're inside the live checkup. Hello. Good, good morning. What's your question to the doctor? Um, I am suffering high blood pressure. Can you do us one favor, please? Lower the volume in the background before you continue. You've got 30 seconds to do that. Okay, I'm suffering high blood pressure, Ooh. right? And um, I have feeding in my urine. Can I be able to take the vaccine? I went to, to get vaccine and they turned me back because of the bleeding in the urine. All right, thank you. Hold yeah, on so that is an acute complication. So that has to be settled before they give you the vaccine. So, you know, JD, it's important to understand. So like I had a young patient who did a blood test just mm-hmm. because of a different issue. And I found that his liver enzymes were elevated. Therefore, I didn't recommend him for the vaccine at the time because I need his liver enzymes to settle. Right. Because you don't want to give a vaccine with this knowledge and not be sure if the vaccine will cause further complications. So in cases like this gentleman with hematuria, which is blood in the urine, I definitely he definitely needs to have that sorted because they need to figure out if the hematuria is due to kidney damage or is it due to something else. And, and they have to know that before they administer the vaccine because they are some contraindications to some of the vaccines. So it's important to know that. Doc, I don't know if you're hearing the same thing that I'm hearing. Persons want to go get the vaccine, but, but we still afraid. not check. And also yeah. that we need to have that conversation and, and with I the And I think I wanted to we resonate to. that you have to be have able to. to to call into your GPs now for teleconsults and ask them. I mean, I don't know if you have nice GPs, but you should. And they should be able to give you that advice on the phone. I could tell you that I've out of 10 patients, I might have told one patient not to get the vaccine. And because I guess because you're looking their, at the situation. Yeah, because of the situations. I could give you a story about my father. He probably won't like it. But my father <laughs> had many clots and so forth. And he was very hesitant to take any of the vaccines. And I finally convinced him that he needed to take at least one. And my father is not old, old, but he's old enough. Um, he, you know, and so he finally took the AstraZeneca. So Guyana is locked down, you're saying? Well, I don't know if he's listening to me now. So <laughs> I, I'm really not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got literally four minutes, guys. We'll place your questions as quickly as possible because I know you've got some very pertinent questions. Hello, good morning. You're live. What's your question? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, Doc and JD, my pressure read 167 over 94 this morning. That's high. It's a little high. So if you've never had that before, I need you to do the blood pressure diary that we mentioned. I'll yeah. tell you it on you could okay. All I'll right, tell go you, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. you could do the blood pressure diary. Um, so that is for about a week or ten days. You wake up. I hope you have a blood pressure monitor. If not, get one. And you wake up. You t- rest for five minutes. Take the blood pressure. Write it down. If you're feeling sick during the day, a headache, dizziness, lightheadedness, or anything like that, chest pain, take your blood pressure again and write it down and put the symptoms you had at that time. And then in the evening, when you're going to bed five minutes rest and then take the pressure and then you can send that into your doctor via whatsapp email whatever your doctor allows Mm -hmm. in terms of communication so that they can see what your pressures are like and then deal with it and i think it's so important for us to make sure and do this correctly and doc because some people may not be doing the testing correctly i think that's important as well hello good morning you're like good morning good morning um i've noticed that many patients take the vaccine in their arm 
Oh well, you can't take it in your butt. So, well, you could, <laughs> but but I mean that is usually. I think he was trying to be the, cheeky, right? He okay. Okay. Next one. I'm hello, sorry. good morning. <laughs> I'm hello, sorry, you good, lost me there. Yeah, hello, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. What's your question, quickly? Um, how is it that those people who are sleeping on the streets are not getting the virus? You telling healthy people when you go out there you must sanitize uh, and thing, but the vagrants they seem to be not affected by it. Their immune system cannot be stronger than... Okay, uh, all right. So next question, because, you know, I, I hear you, but we're looking at two minutes before the top. Good morning. What's your question? Morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. <laughs> yeah, this if is what I do. you have H. pylori, pylori. Uh-huh. in your stomach, yes. should you take the vaccine? Definitely. That's not a contraindication. H. pylori is associated with acid reflux and ulcers so i would treat h pylori but i definitely would recommend that you get the vaccine if that's all you have but again oh, no. speak to your doctor one, one other thing i had uh-huh. a blood clot a long time ago in my leg Is that well you hear how you say a long time ago so that's good if it's long 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 time ago <laughs> you should be fine but again speak to your doctor remember doctor, i don't know you that's and it. so i don't want you to say dr Lebla, make me take this and da 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 so just speak it's, to your doctor the victoria labs open doctor well, I'm not Victoria Labs. That's the thing. I'm Victoria so, Clinic. <laughs> thank you. All right. So we're, uh, Natasha's in studio, and we want. But to yes, we're open. Right. Sort Victoria of. Cl- cl- uh, Clinic. Cl- clinic. Should we, or maybe yes. we'll rename it. Right. Just a couple of things. One thing, Doc, and that's it for the phone calls, guys. Um, in 30 seconds, natural remedies because you're a holistic doctor. So you oh did speak Lord, about the pharmacists. Father. Yes, and mm-hmm. they're asking some of the natural remedies or treatments for. I would dive- not ridicule. like. Diverticulosis. That's we'll do that later because so that's not is a di- type. No, okay. no, no. It's a different topic, and we can approach it in a different manner. So let's talk about even though with hypertension, what are some of the things? Well, you see, you I hate to say treatment. Let's say support because mm-hmm. you remember it, the herbs are a part of lifestyle. So of course everybody knows about the garlic. They know about the Kiraly bush, the wild Kiraly bush. You know about tulsi. You know about your ginger. We can't forget that your saffron or your turmeric. Um, those are very good herbs to support the body um, when you have hypertension. Um, corn silk, which is the hair of the corn, right? Uh-huh. That is very good in boiling it as well if the pressure is very high. I mean, these are all colloquial, so please note. Even though I'm a doctor, this is to support the body and help to regulate the pressures. And then there are Chinese herbs such as hawthorn, danshan. Um, to mention a few and it's very important that when we look at hypertension we look at it holistically yeah. and we see what the cause is and that with Chinese medicine we look at the patterns so we know what we're treating so it's not only the branches but also the root of the problem makes sense yep makes sense thank you as always for coming in this thank you for just being part of the live y- checkup you lucky yeah. yes I know it's my pleasure I know you have I know you have your clients to no right to. now I'm gonna triple mask <laughs> <laughs> but no it really is my pleasure and I mean we have been working on this JD for so long and I just want to remind everyone that we are going through rough times mentally I know it's very 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 tiring it is tiring for us as physicians and frontliners mm-hmm. um, but I want you to know that we can get through this together and please just do what we have to do they call it the three W's and all the W's and all everything you know what you're supposed to do just do it and please remember you're not essential if you're not essential stay home it's an SOE please do us that favor oh my gosh but one more thing contact info someone is asking oh my gosh say, they yes. say say your number slowly slowly please. but you can find us on facebook if you're <laughs> in the social media so it's victoria clinic and then there's ig victoria clinic underscore trinidad and then it's six two 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 one <laughs> six two two zero six eight three and in Spanish, it's seis dos dos veinti dos veinti uno y sos seis veinti dos zero seis ochenta tres. Well, you're just showing off now, but thank I you love very it. much. Yes, <laughs> thank you, and thank you to our friends at Courts for the past thirty minutes inside of the live checkup. Be blessed, Doc. Thanks, Courts, and thank you, and same to you, JD. Take care. See clearly and choose Courts Optical. We offer you free digital eye examinations by our highly qualified optometrists at our 14 locations nationwide. A wide range of designer eyewear for the entire family. 25% off when you bring us your prescription. Plus, we have affordable payment options for you with Quartz Ready Finance and our Forever 18 plan. We pride ourselves in providing you with the best eye care. Quartz Optical. Value you can see.